we're going to go over today is the setup of a local touchscreen with LMD5. We're going to guide you through all the steps on what's necessary required to set up the AZL to be able to communicate a touchscreen. That way you have a nice graphical representation of what's going on with your process. When you're at the LMD5, you'll see the first parameter that comes up is parameters display. You want to scroll down to it, hit enter. Uh, depending whether you were logged in or not previously, it may request or prompt you for a password. Put your password in and then the next one you will get, uh, it'll start at the top with burner control. What you need to do is scroll down to load controller. Under load controller, scroll down to configuration. Now there's two changes we have to make here. The first one is what's called the LC operating mode. This is how the burner is going to operate based on whether it's getting a set point externally or remotely or it's getting the set point within the AZL. We will want to change this from internal load controller to internal load controller bus. That means it will be getting its set point from the touchscreen itself. Once you select and scroll through and get internal load controller bus, hit enter. You'll notice your current now becomes your new. Tap escape once, scroll down to external max set point. What this does is the default from the factory is 60%. This will limit you in what in terms of the maximum set point that the touchscreen will send to the LMV. You always want to change this to 100%. Once you change it to 100%, hit enter. You'll notice your current now becomes your new. Now, once you're done with this, what I like to always tell people is escape all the way back out to the be uh, beginning of the menu. Once you're there, you'll notice you're back at parameters display. Hit enter. Now you want to scroll down to AZL. And when you're in AZL, scroll down until you see a parameter called Modbus. Uh, first one that comes up is address. Under address, you always want to make it one. The default is one as well. Next, baud rate, you'll want to have that set at 19,200. The default is 9,600. Scroll there, hit enter. Next, parity should be set to no. And finally, timeout. In this case, it's set to 62 seconds. The default is 30 seconds. Uh, that's usually good. For our example, we change it to 62. So before we we're able to communicate with the touchscreen, there's one final step that has to be done. Like in all examples, tap escape until you get back to the very beginning and you'll see parameters display. Scroll up to operation, hit enter, and then you want to scroll down to operate mode select. Hit enter on operate mode select, and the only thing you have to do here is you want to turn the gateway on, hit enter, it tells you that the gateway is active. And that now the, uh, the local touchscreen will be able to communicate with the LMV system. Okay, now that we configured the AZL, on the LMV, we're ready to set up the touchscreen. When you first power up the touchscreen, you'll see a screen like this. What you need to do is go to controls and tap on the unconfigured. Once you tap on that, you'll notice your first option that comes up is LMV5 only. In our case, we are dealing with LMV5, but say you happen to have an LMV3, you continue tapping on that box until you get the right piece of equipment that comes up. In our case, like I said, we're gonna go to LMV5. Next, you need to select what type of unit it is. Is it a steam application or hydronic? In our case, it's steam. We will tap on it. And we also select the units. So you have an option between degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius. Finally, we have feed water. In our particular example, we do have a feed water system. So you'll click on that and you'll select RWF55. Finally, you have VSD. Say your job does have a VFD. The only time you enable this is when you have a VFD that is connected to our system and we're pulling the Modbus information off of it. If you have a VFD that is not Modbus enabled, we leave this as disabled. The LMV will know there's still an LMV on there or a VFD on there. Finally, on the right hand side, you'll see what says EA. That stands for Expand Enunciator. In our example, we do not have one, but if you did happen to have one, you would just click on that and you would enable it. You'll notice several other options come up in terms of extra RWF55, economizer, draft control. As I mentioned earlier, we will disable this because we do not have this on our example. Now we are finally done with setting up the initial options on the touchscreen. But however, there's a couple other things that we have to still do. 
Uh, next, you click at the bottom left-hand corner in settings, and you go to boiler address. The default setting from the factory will always be boiler number one. In our example, we are boiler number two. So in order to change this, all you do is you press and hold boiler number two, and what you'll notice is the address should change to number two. This, what this will do is later on when we configure the master panel, it will know exactly which boiler it's talking to. Now, once all that has been set up, we are done commissioning the touchscreen. However, there's a couple cool features you'll get now. You could go into the feed water section. Now what you see here is you'll see what the actual level is versus the set point. The red in this case is zero, which is our actual level. The 40, which is our set point. Additionally, you can go into the in and out detail. This will tell you all the information off of your LMV5. Anything that's highlighted green means it's enabled. Anything that's not highlighted green means it's off. These are all your inputs. So in this case, it's telling us we selected gas, our low gas pressure switch is made, high gas pressure switch is made, safety loop is made, and the low and high oil pressure switches are made. In terms of our outputs, you'll notice that everything is disabled. The reason for this is our burner is not currently running. However, when we do start this burner up, these will start to light up to tell us exactly what's going on with our burner. Finally, if you go into the boiler overview, if you click on the center of the boiler, you'll get a remote control screen. Here, what we can do is we can either manually control this boiler. Oh, I'm sorry, what you have to first do is hand, and then you can manually control it. So you could send the manual fire rate to the unit itself. In our example, whenever you're communicating with the touch screen to the AZL, this will always be set in auto. If you want manual control via the AZL, you will always set it to hand. If you want the burner to turn off, just go to off position. So that concludes our lessons for the local touchscreen. If you need more information on any of our uh, devices, you could always go to our website, which is www.sccombustion.com. Uh, we have an entire library of all the literature on all of our products that we offer to customers. Uh, additionally, if you need more information, you can always contact technical support at 224-366-8445, press number 2, um, or contact your local sales rep to assist you in any matter that may come up.